Hi, everyone. Hi. 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 Good to see you. Perfect. All right. Um, I think that's recording. We're all perfect. Thanks, man. Yeah. Sure. Thank um, so I'm, 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 I'm acutely aware that there's VR headsets and everything uh, in front of us. And, uh, to, to kind of clarify my where I come from, um, I have a, a, a bit of experience with gamification and the use of like computer games and strategy. So that's the closest in terms of uh, technology. I'm not familiar with VR, so I, I, I have some some tension about it. So I'm not not completely unfamiliar. So I'm going to, to be deferring to your expertise and knowledge and try to blend that with um, kind of uh, so the, the teaching and learning perspective uh, on um, I suppose. UDL. So we're, we're, the purpose of this talk is, is pretty much a exploration on how you be, what UDL is for universal design learning and how it links to technology and how we can use technology to kind of uh, further further uh, our engagement with it. Before I dive in, uh, just as a quick check on where we're at, are you do you know universal design learning? Have you heard the term? Are you familiar with it? Are we coming out of complete unnecessary head shakes? In which case, that gives me a, a, a blank canvas to work with, which is brilliant. It makes, it makes my life easier. Um, okay. Um, so, universal design and learning is a, a concept born of um, architectural backgrounds. The idea that, um, that a, a building would be designed to cater to all people of all abilities, all, all um, I don't know, like. like whether you're tall, strong, short, in, in a wheelchair, blind, otherwise, that you design the space for uh, the people who use the space. As opposed to designing something that looks fantastic, but it's actually incredibly impractical to use. Those are the, that's the kind of the background of where it comes from. Um, and applied to a learning context, we're basically saying we want to provide learning opportunities uh, and teach in a way that is not maybe locked into one mindset of teaching, but it can be accessible to, um, to if, I, if I have 12 of you in front of me, to come in and blindly assume you all learn in the same way, it is, it, it, I wouldn't be doing a disservice to someone. Uh, if I come in just to stand and deliver, but, um, maybe then back you loves the people that's talking about you and that's going to be you happy. Maybe you need dialogue and that needs to be your engagement. Maybe you want to get your virtual reality headset on and that's how you can engage. So, we want to try to build and design our teaching and learning around the idea that we have multitudes and variety of classrooms. So that, that's the that's the kind of the the the, the two cents for. Um, ultimately, what we're trying to do is we're trying to achieve a um, a more inclusive. I'm going to keep using the word inclusive and inclusion uh, teaching style. With that in mind, I have my, my fantastic diagram here. Can we all see my, yeah. my really bad diagram? Assuming that this is a classroom, so this is the, the, the 12 of you, okay? And you have students on the outside who, who learn in different ways. Um, there is a kind of a classical thinking of if we want to include these three people. So say it's, it's someone maybe with ADHD, someone with autism, or someone who just le learns in a different way. That what we, what we, sh we as educators need to do is, bring, is go out to these guys in this direction and include them into this section here, okay? And this is our mainstream. What we're trying to do is instead of going and saying, this is the accepted norm, and we need to, 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 to tell them and fix it's kind of a, a medical model of 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 this a bit of difference where we're saying like if you have say a learning difficulty you are broken and we will add things to you to make it better for you so I think the kind of classic example here is the student with dyslexia um, and we're going to go okay what we're going to do is we're going to give you 10 minutes extra exam time we're going to give you larger print fonts in order to fix you and bring you into our mainstream there's a lot, if, if you think that logically, if 10 minutes is better for everyone, better for that student, surely 10 minutes is better for everyone. Or is the 10 minutes only designed there to, to level the playing field? And basically that the two hour exam, a someone with dyslexia needs 10 minutes more. 
in which case you're, you're they kind of assume that the time is the issue um, uh, rather than the learning process. And if I'm assessing your knowledge on strategy or design or whatever, 10 minutes here or there isn't the, 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 isn't the barrier to learning. So what we, what we actually want to do is instead of going out and changing, like, like adding, maybe this is an adding process um, where we're adding new things to it, uh, like, like adding virtual reality, adding gamification, adding larger font or screens or whatever it might be, adding this technology in the classroom. What we want to do is, is change this and, and go to a, a, an idea where actually we change the mainstream. The, the mainstream becomes, instead of giving 10 minutes extra to, on the exam to the student with dyslexia, we either give everyone an extra half an hour, and that, it, it's the same for everyone, or we kind of acknowledge that maybe the exam is not the ideal way of assessing. If I'm assessing your, your writing skills, okay, well, I can let you do an exam, or I can let you write an essay, or I can let you, um, I don't know, do a uh, speech to text uh, um, uh, process. Or it effectively, I, I, you see this a lot manifesting in assessment where instead of an essay, it might be a, a podcast or a video or a poster presentation or a stand and deliver. And we're, we're basically bringing variety into the classroom and acknowledging that people will learn in different ways and people will want to be assessed in different ways. So. With that in mind, where is my, I think this, this is going to change my slides. Um, I'm going to go to, to slide three and then back to slide two. Um, so if you are Googling U, UDL or having a look at Universal Design for Learning, you will see these three pillars come up over and over and over and over again. These are the, the, the principles of Universal Design for Learning. Often presented as representation, expression and engaging. So effectively what we're trying to do here is give um, students difference or variety. Um, it, it, do you want me to zoom in on that? Or do you, I see people taking pictures. So the multiple, effectively, multiple means of representation is we want to provide um, Say if I'm, I, I, I got the notes on the screen here. If I was, say, maybe slightly more clued in, I'd have had handouts for you as well. So you didn't have to be taking photos, or you would have been provided with the, with the, the slides in advance, and, and you, you'd have had access to them, you could interpret them your own way. Um, wouldn't it have been nice if I had a five minute video to play? Um, you could take away and, and teach yourself and, and, and learn in your, in your own time. And you see that a lot of the lectures will. will they, they, they are doing versions of this over time where um, I'm doing a, a strategy module where I teach and my, my, my week one notes is what is strategy. And there's a, a YouTube link to someone who's made five notes of what is strategy. I have a PowerPoint slide of what is strategy. My class notes are recorded. And the students can engage with however they want. Yeah, so, they, they, so they can, so they, there's variety in, 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 in their. Um, how, I suppose, how the, the data, how the knowledge is represented to them. Um, in terms of expression, that's more how they communicate with me, uh, or how they show what they know, or how they engage with the learning process. Are they, um, like, I, 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 when I started teaching, I, I kind of did the, uh, I'm going to get everyone to, to present. What about the, the, the student who has a, I suppose, a, a Social anxiety doesn't want to stand up in front of his peers. Now, we don't want to not challenge students at all, but maybe we need to be a little bit more cognizant of that that, that the student who is has, has a, a different approach to what worked for me or what it works for the the the, atyp no, sorry, the typical student. So uh, maybe if you have a, 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 say a, a presentation assignment, um, you're looking to basically say, okay, well let's give difference, let's give Give variety. I might get uh, after the class present a five minute presentation, but maybe yourself you don't want to, to don't want to do that. You kind of go, can I can I teach a uh, five minute video? Uh, can I send a five minute video? And what we're trying to do there is give the students a variety of uh, um, options in how how they communicate. Now we'll come on in, in a slide or two's time. What we're the purpose of this is we need as Educators, we need to be very, very clued into what actually it is that we're assessing. Um, I have a 
a, and particularly given to say that we have a variety of nationalities in the room here. Imagine I was giving you all a written piece of uh, asylum, and I was, say, assessing management knowledge, and you, I started kind of like docking marks for your English language usage. Like, why am I assessing that? That's not my, that's not my, 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 my area, my expertise. I'm, I'm, I'm not, a, I'm not, a, I'm not an English teacher by any stretch. Um, and I started putting in disclaimers on my assessments, particularly uh, after on the podcast and video options to my students. Um, I basically said, I'm not a video author. I have no idea how to make a video. But if you want to do it and do a video, when I'm assessing it, I'm not assessing your post-production skills. I'm not assessing your design. I'm assessing the, the, the management knowledge. That's, that's what, it, what I'm giving the student the option to communicate that to me in different ways. And I'll have, and so it, we need to put a lot, a lot of time and energy into the start of the, the, the assessment design, the assessment strategy, uh, and how we're making sure that we're hitting learning outcomes. Um, so that's the, the, the second pillar. And then the engagement is that is maybe the, the classroom type. Now I'm very conscious that what I've done today is I've walked in and for the first test, I've done standard classroom format. I've done standard deliver and talk. And that is what I grew up with. That's how I was educated. It's what I, I've, I've uh, experienced. Um, now there is a place and time for this. There's also a place for group work and get two or three of you do something, two or three of you do something. There's a place and time for um, like, like any variety, and, and looking at your 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 toys that you have, with you, <laughs> like these are like obviously very very interesting, changing ways of doing education and, and exploring education opportunities. Um, but I, for me, like I know when I started introducing uh, the use of computer games in the classroom, that they are a variety in the process. They are a, a, a multiple means of engaging that over, say if I have a group for 12 weeks, that it's not a 10, 11 of the same format, that it's three of this, four of that, two of that. There is variety in, in the process. So people have an opportunity to flourish and engage um, in, in different ways. Um, and basically, it's, a lot of it is about it is providing opportunity um, to, to students. And I think a, the more I, I've gotten into this, it's a very, Humbling experience as well from an educator's point of view. But, but, but the, the, there's a kind of an old my background would have been that you have the, the sage on the stage, the kind of the, the, the lecturers, the SR, um, and they impart math, uh, and the, the, the students are recipients, and they they basically have it handed to them. Is anyone familiar with the banking concept of education? Have you come across with the, with the, with the banking concept? One or two lot of so in, in effect, it's a, an educational theory that, that holds that, like, effectively, the, the student is the, the empty bank account, and the, the, the lecturer or the teacher has, has knowledge. And then I put knowledge from me into your bank account, and you sit there, and I'll keep depositing knowledge, 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 slowly over time, your bank account rises. Um, and I mean, I'll, I'll come on to a, a piece around the philosophy and so on, how it manifests what, what we do. But there is a a like, it, like if, I, if I if I was tasked with uh, teaching through virtual reality, I will probably default to having to assume that my students will likely not work. But my job is facilitating in that scenario that I'm not dictating knowledge to. Um, so before I I chop and change here, any questions or any uncertainty here? Now, I, 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 there's people who do uh, PhDs and masters on just these three slides, these three pillars here. So if I rush through it in five minutes, uh, and if I, if, I, if you've any made or any questions there, so far so good. Okay. Um, to go back, I, I skipped this bit. What we're actually doing here? Uh, I want to do the 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 um, what it is and what it's not. So the the, the what's not piece is it's not a cat. It's not a catch-all. It's not a solution for everything. Um, I want to spend some time um, on your approach and how we can, we, we can blend this going on. Then we're going to do a, basically, this bit in the middle is probably the knowing, doing, believing, and then the new to, so the, the, the three pillars there, knowing, doing, believing, are pretty established around inclusive education, and we're going to add owning to this in a few minutes. 
But I want to, uh, where am I going? Um, of the seven principles here, I want you to look at um, number five in particular. Okay, and this this is the one. This is the one that, that uh, I th I, I've seen the most issues with. I'm not going to go through all seven. I think intuitively a lot of them make make sense quickly. I think um, number five, the tolerance for error, and. Um, like, I like that example of a video. Um, so students submits a video, and it's not perfect in terms of its production. And I go, okay, well, I'm not an expert in video. I'm assessing the, the, the content. So I have a tolerance for their error. That, that, like, they're not video experts. But if I'm assessing strategy, if I'm assessing fine art, if I'm assessing um, whatever it is I'm assessing, that I, I acknowledge that, there is, that there's imperfections. In everyone's work, mine, mine as lectures as well, and it's it's probably the the area where I've seen the most resistance from um, from faculty from from teaching, where the the assumption um, put the, put the maybe a, an example on this that 100% is totally perfect, and that is the the elite version that we're aiming for, and. Particularly if you're dealing in a discipline with, uh, like, if you're an accounting lecture, and the, and I'm, to any accounting lectures in the room, I apologize, I'm about to like re re ruin this example. But if it's a maths question, the question is two plus two, the answer is four, right? But if I'm a marketing lecture and I say, how do you sell this green apple? There's a thousand ways to sell a green apple, and a thousand ways we haven't explored. So there's no 100% right the answer. All you can do is go, I think this is an, an option, and here is justification and theory that would support my position. So you're never going to get to 100%. So when you're, when you're writing that assignment, or when you're engaging with the assessment of it, knowing that there is going to be error, and not being hypercritical of that error, and kind of more celebrating the successes. Now, that's not kind of about giving participation awards to everyone saying, well done, I've had in the back at all, at all times and all occasions. But it's, it's, it's as much about um, basically knowing that, that, that if there's effort being made, that it's probably coming from a good, uh, a sound place, and that we're, we're, we don't want to be kind of getting the red pen out and kind of saying, this is bad, that's bad, this is bad. Um, effectively, the the way I would kind of summarize the seven principles would be a an appreciation for play. Okay, now bear in mind, like I, I would say, I mentioned I, the use of computer games, um, and you guys are, are bringing the into, into your assessments, into your strategy, your teaching design. That is like, so I'm, 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 I'll give an example from from uh, what I've done. Anyone play computer games like? And then here play computer games. Never have played them or yeah, something like that. Okay. So say say for example, right, there, there's a computer game called like SimCity. You build a city, right? If I'm teaching strategy and I go, right guys, go play the game for an hour. Build a city, knock it down, blow it up, whatever you want to do. Put the streets in triangles, put the streets in squares or whatever. And then after an hour, I kind of say, okay, find a uh, as a, a, a piece of strategy and town planning or whatever, and then evidence with, with your play. And if, if that is in terms of traffic management, and then so maybe the three in the corner come up with it, like read a piece of theory on, on traffic management, try to implement it in the game, see if it works, if it doesn't work, and then like that. Someone else is doing about, uh, more about um, industrial zoning versus residential zoning, and they, they're kind of working with strategies. If you put them together, you put a expensive uh, luxury apartment beside a waste disposal location, what context does that occur? We're basically saying, like, here, I, I'm giving the parameters, the, the rules in which we play, and then you guys play and you find your own your own education journey in there, as opposed to being very, not dictatorial, but very prescriptive in terms of, these are the five things you must learn today, but if I kind of go, right, oh, the theme we're working on at the moment might be, um, uh, plan. There, so, some of the broad like that. So, plan, engage, plan, make sure planning is through that, 
but your learning experience is going to be different to yours, going to be different to yours. And that, that's what the, the, we kind of want to be able to pr provide an opportunity for where students are uh, champions of their own educational experience. And it, it requires a, a, a little bit of ego management, but on our part, where we step away and kind of go, we aren't the, the be all and end all, um, and we defer a little to the students' uh, own, own experience. Now, to do that, um, it's funny, we're, yeah. we're demanding error in error practice because yeah. mistake taken and risk taken and uh, getting out of your comfort zone yeah. are things that we demand yeah. of the students. Yeah. And quite often, the fault is they are shying away from error and they want perfection. Yeah. You know? um, and we do everything possible to break them out of that so that they go into a space that's a new space. And, and, and I, 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 bet it's, I suppose that's fascinating to hear from my side. Well, I, I, I would deal out with our entrepreneurship students. Yeah. And like there's a, uh, a, a, a fairly established concern in business schools where the students are, are obsessed with the one right answer. Yeah. And, and, and like that, we, we try to, to, to like get them to, to take risks. And it's OK to fail. There's a stigma around failure. Uh, and, and students are, are taught, particularly our version of the leading cert, I'm not sure with, with uh, um, the A levels in the UK, and, uh, uh, but like the, the, the schooling process is very much a learn the right answer, get the right answer, and then, and then when they come into higher education, I think what we try to do is get them to, to, to break out of that, but there's this, this built-in hesitance. Uh, have any of you done the, um, or heard of the marshmallow game, the marshmallow challenge? Um, this, is, this is one for, for everyone to take back to your students, okay? <laughs> um, marshmallow challenge, this is again a, a five second tour. Five, uh, the marshmallow challenge is you get 20 pieces of spaghetti, a meter of, of tape and a meter of um, string and a marshmallow. And the challenge is basically in 20 minutes to build the highest tower that you can. Um, and it, this, is, it, this isn't something twee that I've made up, this is a, an established challenge that is in engineering schools and architecture schools all over the world. Uh, so, and like marshmallow challenge or marshmallowgame.com, there's a whole list of things how to do. And the research based on it is like there are, there are two people who perform at opposite ends of the spectrum. You'd hope architects are good at this, and they are. Engineers are good, and that's fine. Um, business students are, are all. And, 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 and what happens, the, what, and it, 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 we did it over here in our business school. What you see is the business students build, 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 they get this really big tower. And then at 19 minutes and 38 seconds, they get the marshmallow, which is susceptibly heavy, and they put it on and they go, ta da, but actually it all falls down. Because uh, that weight breaks it. Who do you think does really, really, really well at this challenge? Kindergarten students. Because <laughs> what they do is they put up one piece of, of spaghetti and test it. And they don't know it and they test it. They play for 15, 20 minutes and they're testing, 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 testing the whole way along. So when they have uh, 18, 19 minutes in, they put the marshmallow in, it's their 15th attempt to see if the marshmallow will hold. So their, their structures tend to sound, but business students have this build, 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 get really, really high, and then it all falls over. So they consistently score very poorly. And it, it's, it is this idea of, of, of uh, and we use it over here as a kind of way of saying to them, like, like let's not obsess over the, the one right answer. And particularly, say, from an entrepreneurship perspective, all, a lot of the entrepreneurship textbooks, it's like, here's best practice, here's how, what you should do, definitely do this, definitely do that. And in part, it's kind of saying, go out there and be Elon Musk, go out there and be Richard Branson. And there, right? so they, that, that's, not, that's not reality. And there's an argument for, instead of best case scenario teaching, but worst case scenario teaching, I don't even say, don't do this, don't do that, don't spend money here, don't waste money like that. Um, and, but then it's going in and starting class on failure. Um, and like I, I've asked, like, and I've been, I keep getting laughed at, uh, about having a module on failure analysis. I mean, like, if you look at, say, something like the airplane industry, like the safest form of transport, because if something goes wrong, if there's a plane crash, they spend millions to find out what went wrong. What screw wasn't in the right place? What, 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 what led to the incident? If the car crashes, people go, oh, car crash, probably driver, and move on. Um, and it becomes less, less safe in consequence. So the, the, the more we analyze failure, in theory, the, 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 as, you, as you say, explore, it brings in new, uh, new learning. 
And I remember reading about Dyson, the hand dryers and vacuum cleaner guys, uh, how they are very reluctant to hire um, people from other industries. So like, if you work for Aer Lingus, they don't want to bring you in. You don't bring Aer Lingus' ideas with you. They want to hire graduates who haven't got top of the class. They want the, the graduates who kind of muddled through and got through and are going to make mistakes. And in the mistakes, they're hoping to find the next solution. Uh, and, and so they're, they're hiring, innovate, they're building innovation into their hiring practices. Being that mindset is kind of what we're trying to do here. We want to build opportunities for play into our curriculum. We want at some point over the 12 weeks or the 25 weeks, or however long we're with students, so three to four years, that they have opportunities to uh, engage. And um, with that in mind, and this is a, a, um, a, a thing I haven't thought to include here, um, it's a, a book recommendation, um, a book called The Power of Moments. Um, and it's a, for, for anyone who works in education, I strongly, strongly recommend it. And it basically talks of the idea that if you have a class, a group of students for 25 weeks, you have them twice a week, so you, you, you have 50 touch points. In all likelihood, even the best one in the way, if you're the best lecturer in the world, they're not going to remember 50 lectures. If you're lucky, they'll remember three. So if we can create moments in the classroom, that they're the ones that will be the ones that are remembered. So like that, that marshmallow challenge, if I had the first years, I've had the first years maybe 20 times at this point, they'll remember the day I brought in those spaghetti. They're not going to remember week six, class two, I spoke at them for an hour about entrepreneurship. Um, and we want to create moments that are memorable. So I'd imagine the first day you walk in and go, we're doing a virtual gap. Or the first day you put in walk in and go, we're loading up the computers with a computer game. Or we're going to play a computer game for an That's a moment that they might, they might remember five years from now, ten years from now. But they're not going to remember a generic business class or a generic uh, design class, whatever it might be. That we, we do want to create moments that are memorable. Moments that stand out. Um, and obviously we want as many of those as we can. But like, we have to be mindful that it's not going to be uh, there for everyone. Um, the, I mentioned I want to talk to you about teaching philosophies. Uh, did anyone spend any time considering their, their teaching philosophies and mindsets and a couple of nods? Um, so, the, yeah, I, I think how do we engage with new technologies, whether it's gamification, whether it's uh, VR uh, or augmented reality and so on? Um, I suppose. You have to you have to kind of come into uh, come into the teaching process with a a, 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 a mentioned earlier this idea of, of checking the ego. Um, I, I, I think if we're all paid to stand in front of people, and people have to listen to us talk. There's a bit of ego, I think. Um, but I think there has to be a a, um, a, a bit that uh, we we have to acknowledge that, that, that students have. Have knowledge. Students are are useful uh, in, in terms of their their like their their capacity to learn. Um, and there is a huge. I'm going to get a, a, a little bit serious on this one now. Particularly if you have what we we'll call a mainstream or normal student. Okay. They, they, they achieve the grades that's required to get them in the door. They, join, they, they, they score well at school. They can join our programs of higher education. And we trust that they are capable. Then we get the student who didn't score as well at school. The student who um, enters through a disability access route or a diverse background route or a, a higher education. And they're in our classrooms now. Um, if we don't believe that they can achieve as readily, at the, uh, from day one, we're disadvantaging that student. Um, so I, I remember having a, a, a chat with a, a lecturer, the most, the most pro-student lecturer that you can think of, like, like, like they're very, very giving with their time. Um, and they were talking about how we have to do our best to help the weaker students. And just the phrasing of the fact that these students are weaker. Now, 
I know what he meant by that, that I'm guessing everyone probably knows what he means by that. But even carrying that subtle bias that a student is weaker because they can't conform or can't perform as well in our normal is hugely problematic. And that we're, 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 we're perpetuating that medical model of, of difference. And it's like, you, if you go back to what I was saying, you are different, therefore you're different to my normal, and therefore I must add something. Um, and it's that addition, it's a inclusion by addition rather than inclusion by expansion. And um, I'm expanding my effort, my knowledge, my teaching techniques. So effectively, we, we if, if we're just adding, um, and uh, and we're adding virtual reality, we're adding time to these elements, that we're we're not necessarily addressing this idea that we we believe we don't necessarily believe in the the, the capacity of everyone in the room, and um, and. That it's a, it's a it's a very problematic pathway to be on. Um, uh, like, yeah. Sorry, I didn't want to break your flow. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm curious about this. I mean, we thought about some of the issues you're raising. Yeah. Quite a lot of detail. I think not very much was. Uh, um, I wonder. I mean, one of the thing, one of the um, phenomena that we encounter, um, we have large cohorts. Yeah. Is um, degree of, well, I wonder whether that level of expansion, which um, folds in different approaches to both teaching and learning, yeah. um, is A, um, made transparent to students, made clear that there, are, there are, is an approach, philosophical sort of thing, to the way that you're teaching, that is going to mean that you take different approaches to delivery. And whether, in your experience, you've met the systems, I say that because we have met, I've met sort of direct, explicit yeah. resistance from, from modes of, from students. Right, okay, yeah. Brought to modes of teaching and delivery that are designed to be inclusive. Yeah. So, like, like the universality, certainly designed. So, I, the, 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 uh, for me, and this might be unique to, to me, the, the, the resistance that I see most commonly is not, it's on the higher team students who have succeeded in a process that has worked for them. And then I turn around and like particularly actually it's the final year students, the award year students, where I kind of go, okay, now we're gonna do something different. And they go, oh no, no, no. I've been getting A's this whole way, playing the game the, 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 the standard way. Don't change the rules then. Um, and and that is so that is definitely one area of resistance um, that I see. Uh, and I, I think I think the the best I think your your big to go to this is like the bits on the left, I suppose for me it's leaning heavily on the idea that we are still hitting the same learning outcomes. That that like, and, and even go through and go, this is what this module has to hit. These five learning outcomes are the deliverables. And um, once you show me uh, a competency in A, B, and C, we're fine. I'm giving you the option. You still, if, if, if essay writing is your thing, by all means, that's, that's still an option to you. Um, but if it's not your thing, I'm now giving you something different. And I think what, what, where I see, the, the, I suppose the, I'd say the, this UDL being misrepresented um, is that they'll do that, that the lecture will do assessment one is an essay, assessment two is a video, assessment three is a podcast, mm -hmm. and so they're kind of going, oh, I'm giving variety across the year, and I'm, I'm actually forcing people to do three different things that they might not want to do. I think more the, effectively you, you, the, the variety comes at each touch point where you're saying, okay, well, session one is any of these three, or it is any of these two. Um, the, fir the first part of the question was about, sorry. Um, that's common. <laughs> that's common. Well, it was really to do with, um, I mean, there is, you know, there's the, the ongoing battle with expectation, which you just described. Yeah. And there's an expectation that things are being taught in a particular way. Yeah. So if you're coming from somewhere else, so that transition, I think, that's important. Cool. The other thing, I mean, in response to what you're saying there about these options, mm. we're, you know, we've been, um, this is something that we have some uh, experience with yeah. um, at UAL. Um, and have tried, particularly around things like dissertation in the context of a, an art design course, yeah. which, um, you know, we've moved into a different space. I mean, moved from that space, moved back to dissertation, and moved yeah. back into this 
space, but yeah. what we're recognizing now is the need to teach two forms. So yeah. One of them might be a visual essay, one of them might be a podcast, one of them might be a written yeah. academic essay. But in order to do that, you do have to specify that an outcome needs to be a visual essay, for instance. And what you can't then do, mm. um, we're finding, um, and I'd be very happy to be um, uh, uh, contradicted on this, what you can't seem to be able to do is to say, okay, well, we're going to teach two or four, for instance, visual essay, yeah. um, but we are going to give these other options for outputs to this year assignment. Yeah. So there is a point, there is a limit, I think, to what you do in order to give people the necessary skills yeah. to, to fulfill a more so, a, a sort of broader set or more diverse set of yeah. outcomes. So I, I, I have two two kind of stories in this space. The the first one is is, is that we I did a, a UDL piece here when we had a music teacher in, and he was basically saying that like, like all this variety is well and good, um, but like, like what he was assessing was uh, live performance, and. I can give you the story of the, 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 the socially anxious uh, uh, student who doesn't want to present in front of the classroom. And he's going, but it's life performance. The task is life performance. I can't, I can't, like, like, what, like, like he has to stand up there and play the guitar, he has to play the piano in front of people. That, that's, that's, the, that's what I'm assessing. And then that kicked off the debate with like, the, the English literary uh, lecturer who was basically saying, well, if I'm, I, I, if I am assessing their writing skills. I, like, there's no, like, don't give me a video on your writing skills. Uh, so I think in that case, you, that, I think the learning outcomes are the, are the, the, the core here. And, like, if you are assessing live performance, well, yeah, it has to be live performance. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the debate in that scenario was like, well, what about like, if he's uh, in his bedroom doing Twitch streaming to an audience of 10 people, but he's on his own, he's in a, in a, private, in a private setting, is that still, does that still meet the criteria? And then that, 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 um, I think that is a creative mindset. But then, then you're into is that just difference for difference? Mm -hmm. um, and I do. I, I think that's the that's the 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 the, uh, uh, the crux of it. Uh, I think the other example. Then we had a a student last year on a master's course, and they had to do a thesis at the end of the process. And the the, the students and I mean, I can be fairly open here. The, the, the student is my brother, so I can be as, as, as openly critical as, as I want to. Um, incredibly dyslexic. Like, can't spell his own name with text message levels of dyslexia. So, um, and, um, he had to write this, this I think, 15,000 word thesis at the end of the process. And the supervisors here, obviously cognizant of the fact that, like, I've Study of UDL, and my brother is in the, is the first of the student. So there's a very conscious effort of like, we kind of have to get this one right, at least we seem to, to, to try. And, the, and I felt so sorry for the two supervisors because he basically said, I want to do a, sex, or a thesis by a video. Um, and then what happened was you had this, this, this circumstance where you two staff who are quite well trained in UDL and teaching and learning and so on and so forth. Who were almost micromanaging a student who just wants freedom to express themselves in their own way and not in the 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 the, the, the typical way. And you, but then that just kind of going, okay, but well, what you do, whatever you do, you have to bring back the learning, the learning outcomes at every opportunity. And it just led to this constant back and forth between lecturers who are trying really hard to to do right, to do to do uh, what's right by the students, to do what's right to to help and from the outside looking in, it was the the almost the excessive help was the biggest barrier. That, that they were trying too hard to not hold his hands with the process, but be there for him and, and give him give him a steer at every opportunity. But at every time that they gave him a bit of advice and said, Well, can you try this way, go a little bit, go a little bit left, or do a little bit of this. But he was going, okay, that's that 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 that's too prescriptive for me. Like, just leave me alone for three months, I'll come back and I'll hand you a thing. And if it works great, it doesn't work great. Um, but they were obviously going, we have to protect the student, we have to work and do what's best for them. And so we have to check in with them every three or four days. We have to check in with them every, uh, after the introduction, after the literature review, after this. And he's going, I, 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 it, was, it, was, it was too much pressure on top of them. Um, and it was, it was, it was this, the, the video option was there by virtue of the fact that like, like, I had been saying, oh, we need to have video options, we need to have this, we need to have that. 
Um, and then they go, well, what a perfect guinea pig to get Jeff Scudder to be the, the, the first student to go with the video thesis. And because it was the first, and then you, it, it was always going to be the one that the external examiners picked up on. It was always going to be the one that got assessed. So it almost became hyper, uh, hyper assessed. And it, like, I remember thinking back, to the, if, I, if I could go back a year, I would have told them not to do it, because it, it, it put way too much stress on me. And it was, it was a, and for me, it was very interesting to, 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 that, like, this is not infallible. Like, like I, I'm a big proponent of this, and like, I, obviously, I'm going to come in and sing, and sing its phrases, but it's, it's not perfect for every scenario. Like, like, and I think there, like, there has to be a, an awareness of, of its limitations in terms of it can't cater to every scenario, it can't cater to every student. Um, another example, I'm going to go back a few years to, to a student that I, like, we had a, um, a student with autism in one of our classes, um, and a very pleasant guy, but like, kept himself to himself. Uh, and I, he, he was, he was turned up to the class, and like, even if everyone was sitting in the class over here, he's sitting in the corner by himself and, and, and like, the laptop on and doing his work. And there was a big issue then around group work and group assignments when, and um, like, I could, I could put him in a group with four or five people, I can't make him talk to them. I can't make the, then I, I can't make eighteen-year-olds chat to another eighteen-year-old. I can't force friendships. I can't like that. that um, um, but part of what was being assessed was teamwork. Uh, was, I, mean, I think that's what you, what you were referring to is what the point that I'm trying to make. Yeah. Is that there tends to be, um, particularly when you have a unitized system like we do, where some of the units are very short, five weeks. Really yes. Short, yeah. I mean, with a number of assignments that need to be completed within that yeah. period of time. Now. You know, the ideal scenario would be that you create this sort of um, uh, transport of options yeah. that cater for all students, but in a way it's a slightly dis it's potentially disingenuous in as much as if you said, okay, go off and do the podcast, go yeah. do these things, or you have all of these options for articulating a level of criticality yeah. in response to a brief, yeah. um, but what we've never actually helped you do is work out how to produce a podcast, how to produce a visual essay. Yeah. So they look great on paper, yeah. but in, in reality it's really difficult then for the students to engage with them or they freak out because they don't yeah. see the examples. Yeah. I've or, had a, a, yeah. a lot where we're always trying to push the students to like dictate their own terms for a project yeah. and then we will work on a case-by-case -case basis with individual needs of each student. Yeah. But when you're delivering the brief, and you're saying the choice is yours. The students are like, "What do you mean I have to make a choice? You're yeah. supposed to choose for me. I'm supposed to be. You, you tell me what to do, and then I do it." And they, they hate. Yeah. They hate having options. Yeah, I, I, I was like, what is I, well, I think the options are fine once you've got a sense yeah. of what you know what you want to do within the, the, the options that are made available. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think fundamentally this comes back to how you align delivery yes. and to um, what he is being requested through the assignment and outcome. Yeah. Um, and so you know your example of the Viva is something that we're very familiar with where you know in often the students particular you know years ago when I first yeah. started, those students who were dyslexic were offered this opportunity to produce a Viva and you realize yeah. it's like twice as much work. That's it because you have to yeah. script the Viva and then yeah. you're gonna rehearse it, then you're gonna perform the Viva. Yeah. And you know, how do you um, how do you kind of articulate you've still got to provide this references, your literary literature with you, etc. Yeah. You know, all the equipment the top. Yeah. So in actual fact it's a bit it's a bit it's like Hobson's choice in a way. Yeah. And that's that's why I'm sort of curious that I think you know, these principles of, um, you know, universal design for learning are, I think, we would all so, subscribe to. Yeah. It's it's then, okay, how do you ensure that you're not actually creating more yeah. of a problem in that scenario for students when you're giving them a choice, whether it's that, it's not a real choice, because yeah. I don't know what three of those things yeah. are. I know what an essay is, because I've come to a schooling system that purports to teach me how to write yeah. an essay, in fact they don't. But, you know, they, they're so, writing. I, I, I have a, so yeah, okay, so uh, I'll, I'll give, when I, when I did my doctorate, I did my doctorate in, in uh, School of Inclusive Education, and the whole thing was, uh, it was a doctorate on inclusion in a School of Inclusive Education when, with supervisors on inclusion, and uh, specifically in the UDL space. And uh, it was a professional doctor, so there was uh, assignments along the way the first year or two. 
And on the module around UDL, we got told you had to write an essay, an 8,000 word essay. And I said, any chance I could do a podcast or video, something that, that, that purports to be the, uh, the UDL in, in practice. And at doctoral level, they turned around and said, no, 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 at this level, we can't do that. And I'm like, hang on, like, this is, this is like, it's a bit, it was like they, they themselves saying that they didn't uh, believe what they were preaching. And um, so this led to a huge debate because I, 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 I like to argue. So, <laughs> so, so. Uh, the, 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 the kind of, uh, after an hour of back and forth of, 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 of flight shaving, we look back at like, the original principles of the museum. Okay, and this idea of like it's from an architectural point of view. Um, have you ever heard a little bit of the term of a desire path? And so, 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 so this idea of like if you, if you walk in the front gate over here, it's a footpath. So there's just a, 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 a muddy trackway where people decide this is where we walk. And so, that, so that's that I have a path in design that way, that's the way people use it. And we have a path here that runs along outside the window here. No one ever walks on, but it looks pretty, it looks for the photos. But uh, that, that's not the desire of the users, that's not how they want to use it. And in an architectural capacity, the, 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 if something is designed out of universality in mind or not, it either works or it doesn't. Uh, it's used or it's not. And so there's an argument, they said, that we, could, we thought of that, that effectively, if the, uh, if the work was past fail, there's maybe more scope for this to be valuable. And basically saying that, like, if you do, if I give you options, as, as you say, like, my, I, I experience it too, I give options to my students, they go, oh, God, no, just tell me what I'm doing. And I go, if, 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 I, if, I, if I can withdraw the pressure of, of an A, a B, a C, or 72%, or 61%, or whatever, there is a potential more opportunity to play as soon as they have the pass. Now, I know you're into systematic changes there and, and whole mindset changes. Um, in, in terms of like the and policy shifts, not. But I think there is a there is something in in maybe diluting the pressure on grades or how, like maybe like getting creative with how you would assign the, the, the points for and so on. Um, now I say that no, the the last comment from next year examiner for me was Jeff, you're very generous in your story. <laughs> So I think like for me, but I think in first or second year, I have a lot of the opinions. Have you guys had some kind of style yet? For yeah, yeah, we had yeah. this. So like, like Fiona has written a piece on the merit of grading in first year. And basically it's a it's a hit piece saying like grading people in first year is a waste of everyone's time. And I'm sure she would be delighted on quoting it. But it's it's a, it's it's basically saying that like particularly if, if as you said earlier, when they come in, we want to kind of get them to, to break out of the shackles of of of, of the pursuit of elitism. Um, that if in first year we basically look, if you do a thing, we'll pass it and you move on. We'll reduce the pressure on getting a first or a, a, an A or 83%. And basically, look, if you do the thing, you pass it, you're fine. And actually, as we go up in, like, at, at doctor level, it's all passed out. You want to get your doctor or you don't. Like, I've, I've never heard of anyone who got a 7 6%. Mm -hmm. but, I'm, really, I'm smiling. Yeah, this week. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> because um, uh, only because um, we have a Pascal, we have two Pascal units in our first year, and yeah. I think well, well, my word of caution. Yeah. Because I think you know it feels like you know this is a golden land there of Pascal, but yeah. Gonna, um, what we're what we're encountering is there is um I think and I think based on the conversations I've had with students, but Matt will know better because he's just gone through the assessment process with first year. There is a um, there is a kind of psychic shock that is encountered by students who've been through yeah. formal um, educational sort of routes. Yeah. Um, when they move from a graded system to a pass fail system, I think I don't know whether, and I think it will be worth. I think it feels like a big research project. Yeah. Whether or not the um, the expectation that this is a, a, a relief, a stress relief for students is actually true, yeah. and I think it's, it's super interesting. Yeah. Yeah, well, so, 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 um, one of the things we do at Bath to both alleviate some of the pressure and to open up that process of, process of assessment is so we don't have just past fair modules in year one, but what we do have is that year one grades do not count towards their final degree yeah. classification. Yeah, well, yeah. So, so there is that opportunity yeah. so that they receive the feedback 
They receive yeah. the grades from the grading agents that take them through, but they're learning about what that assessment process involves, how they sit into that shock from further education, yeah. into yeah. higher education, yeah. that grade shift, the expectations is learned through that process. And within the assessment process, we have all forms, well, as many forms as possible in the assessment criteria. So there will be the opportunity for assessment tutorials where they're talking through the submission so that those uh, verbal in yeah, our conversations yeah, yeah. part of and in discussion with the teachers as well as the submission and um, yeah, what your studio work and research and that sort of thing. Yeah, so but, that, that, that kind of yeah. Thing. yeah. I mean, but I think uh, a similar thing to that, like with first years, we're we're basically telling them like we are very, as the external examiner said, yeah. generous yeah. with our grading. If you're not like if you hand up work most likely you're, you're not going to fail and so it's like you they don't have to worry about the grading but at the same time by getting them to, to by telling them not to worry about the grading then when they get their assessments back it's it's like it's part of that like leaving cert mentality where they they almost want you to come in and absolutely throttle them and <laughs> tell them how shit they are yeah. and just be like, you're not good enough to be an animator and you, you can't do this, like you've done yeah. all these things wrong. And mm -hmm. they're just like, what? I just, I don't know why you're being so to me. Like my work is like, your work is and good. This is, so there's a, like you have, I'm guessing animation, the people who are in the room have actively chosen animation yeah. and desperately yeah. want to be there. Yeah. We have a lot of business students who are here because this is just what happens after business, school. Business, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, um, so it's a, it's a, it like, um, so if, and if I turn around and I'm going to go, if I'm thinking of the first years, I, I basically like, try to do a version of pass fail where I'm saying, look, it's not a commercial module, like, do a thing and I'll find a way of getting you over the line. And whether it's, success, it's successful or not, it, we're assessing the engagement with it. And you can see them all kind of go, oh, this is double. Oh, like, kind of like it, it all have to pass. So, so now it's kind of like a, 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 a grade inflation almost, like, or um, it dilutes the importance of it. Yeah. And then when you mentioned tutorials, now the, the, there's a huge, huge value in, in that dialogue between students. And like, I, I, if anyone is looking for uh, homework here, uh, Martin Buber's dialogue or, or like philosophy of dialogue and teaching, this idea of like people will learn an awful lot more if you and I sit down and have a chat rather than me stand and deliver or talk to you. Um, and it, it's, it's the, I think it's the, the theory of I am now, if anyone is really possible. It. But it's, it's basically that like learning happens in dialogue. And we have, so I was thinking in our, in our entrepreneurship modules, we have three to four hours a week, but it's, there's no dedicated, um, uh, dedicated tutorial time where I sit down with you on a one-to-one -one basis, on a regular basis, and have a chat with you about what you're doing. Um, and I think, by and large, everyone knows that would be better, but then there's the economic realities of you, you have an institution that's trying to run a college, if I have to meet every one of you every week for 15 minutes and talk one-on-one, -on -one, well, that's going to be three to four hours of my, my contract. And isn't it easier just to sit in a room with 50 people and have a chat with them? Um, and and, and, and that, that is one of the barriers to this. this that, that, and like, we'll come on to it like, from a technological point of view. A VR headset costs an awful lot more than pen and paper. Um, and so one of the, the barriers to uh, technology adoption is going to be um, like price and, and economic realities of an institution that left. Whether they like it or not, are, are trying to make profit or at least break even. I mean, I, I think the, the one thing, just to return to the assessment thing and the, the past file thing briefly, because mm -hmm. I'm curious about this, you know, the, you know, the, the older I get, the longer I've spent in an institution, the more I, I worry about <laughs> the level of assumption that is um, that, that sort of uh, is the sort of uh, foundation for lots of decision making and also, you know, curriculum yeah. design. And I don't, you know, if you were to, I mean, one of the things that I want to do with, um, my staff team on the program to look at what the narratives are for key components inside of the learning experience. Some yeah. of them will be the outputs, you know. Um, but other, another one, another narrative stream is obviously assessment. Yeah. You know, what is the objective really of assessment? Yeah. And the perverse thing about running a pass fail in the first instance of moving to grading system is that that is totally the reverse of what you want to happen with um, a with a degree course where your ultimate aim is for an autonomous, 
for autonomy in practice. Yeah, it's 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 a perversion in many ways because yeah. in actual fact, what you what seems to be happening, this is hypothetical, um, but kind of grounded in experience. What seems to be happening is that we take students from a, you know incredibly sort of um, regimented, um, regulated system where um, we place where huge amounts of value is placed on grading systems. We then throw them into another situation where in our case what we do is take them into a deregulated effectively space where we give them a pass fail option because we think it's the right thing to do yeah. without really thinking about it or testing it truth be told yeah. and without any proper sort of review mechanism mode of evaluation then we gradually move them back into that space that they were in in um, right. formal education yeah. and then we say right go into the world where no one will be assessing you or in actual fact you know the reality is that you your portfolio shit you're not going to get yeah. So it's a it's a it's a stupid, you know. I'm with Chomsky on this. Yeah. Our education yeah. has got stupidity baked into yeah. it. This is a stupid um, system, which yeah. is, is is predicated on assumption. Um, and I think we've got to be really careful when we come to when we have these conversations about designing curriculum. Yeah. Because often I think, um, in my experience, we um, will take a bunch of theories. Um, which have you know great merits in their own right, um, but they feel like they're perhaps not as grounded in empirical mm. evidence in, in the way that you need them to be yeah. in order for them to be functional um, in context. And the other thing is that you know context is everything. Right? You know, context shift now fluid yeah. all the time. So uh, I'm really I mean I'm super interested in the ideas, um, but there are some there are some aspects to these um, approaches yeah. which I think look great on paper. Okay. They sound great in these sorts of environments, and but in fact, when they're you yeah. know rolled out in the you know with people yeah. who are complicated, right? And yeah. um, you find that they just don't work in the way that you you hope that they they would work. And the pass fail thing for us is one of yeah. those situations where I mean we're in a situation where we want to fail people, oh, you know, yeah. you know? <laughs> and um, this is you know this could have a very damaging effect on a, an incoming student, like, admittedly. Yeah. Um, but you know, uh, if it's point about one, you know, the brutality, you know, wanting to be yeah. brutalised and beaten up, yeah. yeah. it's not Maybe that. That's been, no, 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 no. <laughs> I think we were all a bit Catholic in that regard. But everybody, I think, I recognise that. Um, mm -hmm. You know, from students, and definitely, you know, where they want to feel like they've yeah. earned their, you know, spurs a little bit. Yeah. Um, and so there's that bit of it. There's that bit of the kind of um, psychology of. And I, think, I think you're 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 setting up four of my sides right here. So it's like what one's fantastic is like I think even if you're the first hour that we've had together, I speak at you for 35, 40 minutes. And probably this dialogue, this chat in the last 15 minutes, there's probably an awful lot more nuance and balance and different perspectives being brought in there, which is fantastic. I think I think that, that is the that is a very, very happy. I, I always find it entertaining as well that, like, to, to you reference Chomsky there, um, and I, I listen to an audio book at the moment called The Case Against Education, um, The Case Against Higher Education. And it's, it, I think, the longer you do this job, the more data and persuasion you become with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Being in the institution and there's all of the, the systems that yeah. are in place. And you realize that okay, these systems aren't really working. And so then you see you see a shiny new system and you think, well, the one we have doesn't work. So this we one must it that. must be better. And then you try to like, oh no, th this doesn't really work either. And, and you're and stuck I, between two things and you're like, like neither of these work. And change happens very quickly. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. It's yeah. Um, and I, I, so I was at, at a meeting the other so we were at the very seminar the other day and they mentioned that it was mentioned that there's 200 teaching staff in IT in some capacity. And I was at a meeting the other day where the words, uh, it was phenomenal, excellent, and incredible uh, engagement of teaching the uh, faculty with um, professional development. And I taught a UDL course to seven staff members, um, which is what, 3.5% at best. Of our staff are engaged in, and that's the only professional development course that I can think of um, that place, and that was phenomenal engagement. And it gets me, it gets me thinking in terms of like, something. What? Yeah, yeah, context and everything. But I think I always, it, it, it strikes me like, I know, I don't know what your, your institutional contracts are like. I know for us, 
and uh, in I in all IT in Ireland, there's no obligation um, for the teaching staff to be for training education and to and there's no obligation to pursue professional development from a, a classroom engagement or teaching and learning perspective. Um, and I think I think one of the things you will always see is the staff members who actively engage and pursue, um, even if you decide to do a UDL course and you sit through it for a week or a day or however long and you go, that makes no sense to me, I don't like it. At least then you're moving out. Right? And the good you you've a knowledge base you can move out. Right? Um, and you can kind of walk away from it and go, that, that, that's not for me. And um, it's the it's the the staff member who's been 30 years in an institution teaching the same way, hasn't changed their notes and aren't going to change their notes no matter what you do, they're not going to attend a profession development. That's, that's probably the bigger factor here than, than, than uh, a lot of what we've been talking about. Um, so to, to, I, I mentioned that you, you, you would uh, uh, set up my, my next batch of slides quite nicely. Um, I'm going to move on. I saw the, the, this is kind of the, 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 the it's rice or oh, I don't have it. Do I have it anywhere on the screen? I don't. Uh, or O U S E rice. Uh, to uh, I'll scribble it there. Um, I can't read my own handwriting. It's 2003, 2006. Uh, you focus on it twice. Three pillars here: knowing, doing, and believing. Um, and effectively, to to kind of um, look at what what you're you're nodding towards here in terms of like. How tested are our inclusive measures like UDL? How tested is VR? How tested is gamification? Um, um, and I think in terms of these inclusionary methods, these, and, and in terms of the the um, the students that we have and their their differences and their difficulties that they have, and effectively, I think we all broadly are aware that um, students come with different backgrounds, different learning styles, different learning needs. And there is also a reality. If I have eight students, um, is animation about eight to ten students in the room? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Thirty to five. Thirty five. Okay, it's on the way. Okay. So, so, like, so what I ask here is like, when you teach, say, the first years, are they the first years? Or are they Dave and Mary and John and so on? Um, the, they're, they're the first years. Plus Dave and Mary and John, okay. and then like gradually, yes, no, yeah, of course, yeah. But then they still sort of yeah. stay as like. So I, I, I taught in the university a few years ago, and I had a, I think it's 220 second year students, and through the course of the year, I don't think I ever had a name. No. Uh, and, and they were the second years to me. And um, so I like in that scenario, I will never know your issues or your issues, or your issues. I just know you're all second years, and I'm going to I'm going to treat you as individuals. Or not, as one individual collective rather than as, as individuals, and that, I think that is part of the problem with massification of higher education. And um, like we we're we're constantly uh, and I mentioned at the bottom here our strategic plan in 2019 2023. We're all like we want more and more and more people in the room. Let's get as many as many students as we can. Let's increase student numbers. But also, aren't we great because of our small class and our small class size? We get to know everyone individually. And you, know, you can't do both. Yeah. You can only you, you can only do one. You can't do both. Um, and then, then it, it's like we're opening up our doors. We're inclusive for everyone, but also we are elitist and we're uh, um, higher education and only the best of the best get to come here. Um, and so okay, well, like like in that scenario, it's you have staff who know about UDL, they know about teaching variety, they know about student difference, and they know about the like the the challenges that people might face and that is step one but you you want to, to know about teaching strategies that can be used you want to know how different students learn what students want to get from their experiences and it's it, it's one thing to to that like if you if you don't know this you probably aren't going to be in a classroom anyway. you're not going to be doing this job um and i would say quite rarely do students or do do staff know about Say the legislative and policy contexts and things like that. Like in Ireland, that if you have, if you are from a, a disabled background, you have a right to equal opportunities in education, and and and, and that's what that's why we have. But in Ireland, it's the higher education access, a higher education access route, and the disability access route to, to education. So the here and there, um, and then they are like they're they're 
they're, they're laws, they're, 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 they're a legislative context. Um, and the, so there's, and, and people, you don't need to know that, uh, like, the, like bottom laws are being quoted when students end up in the room, but you do have to know that they are in the room. And, and they, so step one is knowing that they're there. The next two steps are, are the, are the where, where things get, get tricky. Um, I can start doing, and I can start putting in variety into my assessments, and I can start putting up notes onto the virtual learning center, uh, um, platform, be it Moodle or Blackboard or whatever, and I can do all the things that I'm meant to do, and I can tick boxes, and I can give large print for an uh, assignment or for, for example, I can give 20 minutes extra, and um, I can do gamification, I can put a, 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 a like, difference in assessment. We, 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 I, 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 got, I inherited a class a few years ago that was teaching strategy, and it was, it was an event management course, and they were doing a strategy module, and the assessment that was built into it was for 30 people, one group assessment, to do what's called cultural mapping. And basically, they go to, a, the students would go to a town and document all of the evidence of culture in the town. And for the life of me, having talked about it for three or four years, I haven't breathed what that has to do with strategy or what it has to do with, with event management. Not a clue. Um, and then you picked up the, the, the book. Yeah, so that, 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 yeah, yeah. So, so, that, that, yeah. so, so that, 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 it, 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 they produced this, this booklet at the end of the year, kind of look at all the, the evidence of, the, of culture in this one location. And I did, I taught that. I, I didn't know what I was doing. I, I, I didn't, and so I, I was doing it because I knew what I did, and I knew what the requirement was, but I didn't have this bit. I didn't believe in it. I didn't believe in it as a, as a legitimate piece of assessment. I didn't believe the students were going to learn how to do it. And the students sense that. The students know I don't believe in what's going on. And if I can, I can talk, I can do all the things. I can kind of find the student with autism and kind of go, yeah, I, I, I know I'm meant to teach you with uh, equity. I know I'm meant to provide lots of opportunities. If I don't actually believe that student can achieve in my classroom, I am being, I am being unbelievably harsh and difficult for that student. Um, and I, uh, to go to the conversation you were having, if I, if I don't believe in UPL, absolutely fine. There's lots of different uh, teaching methods and, and, and philosophies out there. Um, and I do, I do have to believe in what I'm doing. I do have to believe that, that so when I give Brian assessment, I believe in its ethics. And um, if I am giving, if I'm facing the students in the room, and then like this is, it's a kind of a, a, a crisis of confidence at times, um, where uh, like, like I'm, do, I'm doing an entrepreneurship module at the moment, I have four students after six weeks, their plan for entrepreneurship was to go to the local supermarket and buy cans of Monster and a Euro can and bring it back to the campus and sell it for two years. And that was six to eight weeks of planning. And like, in my head, I'm kind of going like, do I believe these guys can ever be entrepreneurs? <laughs> and so, so, and, and like, like, there is that kind of crisis in confidence that like, no matter what I do, this isn't gonna work. And, but at the same time, so, the, a question was posed to me around this believing piece a, a, a couple of years ago, and it stuck with me for a while. Um, at the moment, those students are failing, right? And because they're respecting to them, they're being useless so far. Right, but what if they could fail me? And when I grade them, and I go, you didn't meet the standard. And if they can turn around and go, yes, but Jeff, you didn't meet Kevin Scott standard. So, so they can fail me the way I can fail them. And Effectively, so if I so if I if I start to think about when I put a an F grade or a less than forty or whatever the, the benchmark is or a fail grade on a piece of paper, if I internalize that and look at it as my failure toward them and not their failure towards the class content, and I, it's a it's a very um, dangerously worrying mindset to get into, um, but. I am sure the, when you were students, you had lectures that you wish you could have found. And that you, you kind of go like, they didn't appeal to my needs. And if the student with autism who wants to sit quietly in the corner and then fails group work because he doesn't engage, is that his failure to engage the process 
Is it my failure in my design of the assessment or my failure to, to cater to his individual needs? Um, and maybe I can't cater to everyone's individual needs, but like, I, I, I have to, like, I think there is a, a um, there should be some element of, of belief that I have to, that, that, that it is, the failures are in part on me. Um, and it, it's a, it's a, it's a, 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 before I can continue that, any thoughts on that from the room in terms of like, like what if you are the fail, the failing entity? The thing is, I, uh, it's the struck me earlier when you use the expansive model there, and uh, you know, uh, inclusion by expansion, my knowledge, my awareness, and I looked at the bottom as well, my imaginative solutions. Yes, which I think is the requirement. For example, the student, the students, the autistic students. Um, who will sit away from everyone else. Yeah. Uh, the first time I ever uh, encountered an autistic student, I still remember to this day, Sam, uh, 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 behaviorally exactly as you described. But um, we came to the group project and how did Tom work? And I said to all the groups, I said, Tom is there, okay? He loves the library. You need research for your projects. You know, anyone who includes Tom in their project to do the research for them. Mm. He can work individually, but he's contributing to your project. That's a model. Like, you yeah. know, it's a manager. Yeah. You know, um, and uh, a couple of the groups picked that up. One of them then kind of engaged Tom. Yeah. He beat it away in the library, and then he worked away. But even if you're even more imaginative, and I know this is not going to work for everybody, yeah. it's not a solution, so it's for me. And, uh, uh, we've had the group of one. And a really good uh, yeah. uh, super yeah. cat, Gentile, and she wanted to work on her own yeah. in the group project. And, but, uh, and then I'm saying, wait a sec, you're in a group of 30 anyway. Yeah. There are five other groups that are real groups, and Marwina wants to work on her own. Yeah. But you have to present every week. Yeah. And as a result, everyone is presenting. Yeah. Marwina has to present, she's the group of one. You know, she's yeah. working on her own. And the others are learning from her presentation, and she is learning from all of their presentations, yeah. which is group working. Yeah. You know? And you say, that qualifies. Okay, yeah. we've got over that hump. You know? Now, I, I don't encourage groups of one or giants yeah. anymore. Yeah. You know? But it was another way of being just flexible and imaginative. In, and that's a kind of keys to what you were saying. Yeah. About the expansive model. So, so, so the, the, I suppose in that in those anecdotes, what I'm hearing is that, that you you believe in your solution. Yeah. Yeah. And I think what I'm hearing as well is that you believe in I think it's Tom who is the yeah. right. You believe in his ability to contribute. Yeah. Uh, and and so so that that's that's the prize. That's the yeah. Prize. Uh, yeah. And if you if you if you are kind of sitting there kind of going like and the thing of him oh he's a burden he's really he's a struggle he's this he's that. Um, it's it's easier to teach these really engaged students. It's always easier to teach the engaged students. Yes. Um, and you kind of go, oh, I, I, I don't think I, I don't think Tom's going to make it anyway. Yeah. Um, and then, then you you start to disengage. And so if you don't believe in his ability, yeah. you're you're screwed from the start. He's screwed from the start. Yeah. Um, so so I think that, like, like that is the the the, the I suppose what what the, this what Rouse is writing about in terms of the the the, the authority figure in the classroom, the educator, the lecturer, the teacher. Has to believe in the ability of the student, um, and if not, so I, 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 at the start of um, of my doctor, I was interviewing uh, um, higher education lectures, and um, about a week before I started doing the interviews, um, I was I was in, I was in the canteen here and I'm having a conversation with two of the lecturers, and I'm not going to name the lecturers, but. Um, one lecturer turned to the other one and said, do you have that idiot in third year? Uh, yeah. And I'm sure we've all made, like, made comments about, it, but they doubled down. And they're like, oh, he's absolutely useless. He's, no way. he's never going to pass. He's not going to do this. He's never going to do that. And I'm, I was playing with him. So I meant to be interviewing this person at least time about their attitude toward inclusion. And I'm thinking, how am I going to have this, this interview, this process? Because like, I don't even know that like, they're coming with serious thoughts. Um, and it wasn't just that, like, like, like I, I, I prepared to my, my boss, or whatever, after contract, whatever. We've all made a comment, but it was, there was, there was, there was truth in their, their comment. They, 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 they were like, 
the city is there here. And if, if the, there was belief in the yeah. well, <laughs> well, I, 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 I found that time, I, I remember thinking, what if that student could fail that lecture? And so they didn't believe in my ability to fail the classroom. And um, how differently that dynamic could have changed. Um, and I suppose the, the other thing is, like, we all believe we're good lecturers. Um, so ask any student, and I'll say some of us aren't. <laughs> so so there, there is that. Um, I do want to kind of flag, uh, I know I mentioned the expansion, the expansion piece. Um, there is a, like, the idea of inclusion, to go back to my city diagram here, um, I, I should have hammered this a little bit more at the time. Um, inclusion presumes we're including into an existing model, uh, into a, a, an existing kind of mindset. Um, and there is a, a small level of theory and publication of moment that are leaning towards getting rid of the word inclusion, uh, that, that we're going to include you and you into our model uh, of education, and we're going to do it rather into uh, educational expansion. Uh, and get, uh, we're going to expand our model to include everyone else. So, so it's just a, it's a language thing, or some of you think it's just semantic. But I, I like the idea of expansive, expansive education rather than inclusive education, even though it's all in the inclusive in the inclusion space. And um, I think there, there is there's uh, there's a lot of potential in that. And um, so the the, the, yeah, the 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 to go back to, to to kind of return to the conversations earlier, this idea of of like, do we do we legitimately believe the people in front of us can, can perform? Um, and then also, yeah, oh, sorry, I, I wasn't sure if that was your address now. Yeah, I, was thinking, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was just thinking, oh, I probably feel like I fail my students quite often, actually. Yeah. But I, know, I was thinking why that might be, and it's not more often than not, I don't think it's about my actions, but maybe the constraints that are put on me by the institution and so it's right. systematic, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and the expectations match as well. Yeah, and, and it, I'm constantly reflecting on practice. I think we all do that. But yeah, it feels like I can never do quite what I want to do. Yeah, and so there's quite a big part of what I'm doing that I feel is just out of control. I, I do think that so you, you said that you're quite reflective of your practice, and you said that I, I think we all do that. I think if you signed up to a program or system that's led to you to be in this room today, you probably are quite self-reflective about that. You do reflect. I don't think the majority do. And I think that then maybe I'm being I'm I'm cynical, but I think a lot of this, I, I I think there is a lot of educators who, if and someone explained this to me before that like, if you have chosen this career that you actively pursue your career as an academic. But you probably are quite self-reflective. You do want to do right by your students. You are trying to do to, to improve in that space. If you have fallen backwards, and this is a backup plan, and it's because your private sector job didn't work out, and you have to get a job in education, to like, but like that that you're not reflecting on your practice half as often. You're not you're not half engaged. Now, um, now to your, your your broader point though, in terms of that, like. We are, like, if, if we are failing the student, is it the systematic, uh, certainly, I'm trying to put a, an example on. Can you give me an example of, of, of rather than me putting my own on it? Uh, well, I, 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 think, I think we talked about student numbers and yeah. space and things like that, and there are yeah. things clearly that, clearly that we want to do differently, yeah. in different, different ways. Yeah. That I simply can't read got uh, over 120 students in year one. So, on very basic level, that would be one of the things. Yeah. Things. You're, you're, yeah. So, yeah. So, even with the best will in the world, like you can't, you're not going to learn 120 names. You're not going to learn backstories of, of, of every individual. Um, and even if you go to your your superiors and say, "Well, look, I can't perform." Optimum teaching strategies with 120 people in the room. There's economic grounds at play, and I kind of go, yeah, well, like this, this is the deal. This is the key. Um, um, yeah, I, I think there maybe part of it has to be that we we do we do what we can, um, and I think um, the ne the next slide is going to be only by the way in terms of responsibility, and um, that um, if I have 120 people in the room. 
I, I can do, I have to take some level of ownership and I have to do what I can for these students for these two hours a week that I have or three hours a week. And I do what I can, even if it's offering a slight bit of a variety or offering a little bit of, of um, or even providing a video or providing opportunities. Um, and if, if you're moving from, not from zero to 100%, but you're going from zero to 2%, and that's set up. And you take you take ownership and responsibility for improving. And maybe as we talked about earlier, change happens slowly. Um, and maybe after five years, you've gone from zero percent um, uh, uh, UDL uh, or U, or inclusive teaching or science teaching to ten percent. Um, and it also in terms of going go back to principle five in terms of tolerance for error. If you try something and it doesn't work, there's a whole kind of like um, uh, ethics piece around. Say, if, if I go into my classroom with a VR headset and I can go, I'm going to do this piece on marketing and um, say, uh, like ambient marketing in a, at, a, at a sports stadium, how impactful are the, are the, 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 the pieces that are the, the advertising hoardings and so on and so forth? And um, if it doesn't work, have I wasted the students' time? Have I have I been have I not taught the students core concepts because I've been paying out my fancy piece of equipment? Um, and I think there has to be a, a, a tolerance error from the system from the systems which we operate to allow us try the, the methods that might work. Um, and that they that they, if if uh, it, it, it's sometimes like I'm thinking I'm thinking of, I'm specifically thinking of a, a marketing action that we had to wanted to do a piece for using VR, or actually ended up doing a piece on VR that didn't stick. His whole thing was, at the time he was teaching in the city centre, so he basically would get students to go out and walk up and down Grafton Street, one of our main retail streets. Um, and it, it, the task was, class starts at 10 o'clock, go out, walk up and down Grafton Street, and come back to me for 11 o'clock. And with no further context. And at 11 o'clock, you come in the second hour of class, and be okay, that's that. how many for sale signs did you see? Uh, or like, like sale twenty percent offside and so on, and he'd have all these stats like on the street there's forty two like sale starts now kind of uh, signs, and no one knows how effective are they, um, or if no one noticed like the the sports store doing a, a Christmas thing, if it's not noticed by anyone, then what what's the implication? Of it? And then you got told you can't be bringing students off campus. They're not sure. Fair enough. Right. They haven't signed the waiver. Right. Can't do that. So then he did it. He walked down the, the road with a camera doing this. And then as soon as like, we're not paying attention to your crap camera, your iPhone 3 or whatever it was at the time, that very granular. It, it, it. And but they said, I've tried this for three or four years. It's a really, really important thing on ambient marketing with the context and the impact of, of, of uh, mass marketing over time or, or ubiquitous presence and so on. Um, but he's like, like, I've tried this, I've tried it, I've tried it in lots of different contexts. And it's not working because either the system doesn't let me do it, or because the students don't care, or technology is not just up to, up to scratch. And after four or five years of attempts, I'll just use the textbook. And for me, it's far less engaging as a, as a here. If I'm a student, now I have to read about campaign marketing, the ubiquitous presence, all this kind of stuff. You kind of go, well, okay, now, now, like, wouldn't it be better if you always walk down the street and then have it? Like, it's more experiential. It's that going back to the, the power of moments. Um, but I, like, like he was, he's like, like you're wasting the students' time, and I, that's it's a bizarre mindset. I can, I still to this day, this has gone back like ten years ago, this example. But like, I don't, I don't, um, I'd be worried that we're not allowed to try. Um, and and if you have 120 people in the room, you go, right, I've, I've got this weird idea, and it might, work. and I try it, and go, you come back and go, tell you what, that didn't work. Well. But at least you know. But then there's a question, well, that day that you wasted of the students' time. Um, they have they whether in a fee paying institute or like are they paying for you to experiment? Like it's a it's a it's it feels a bit like we're in this cycle of belief or lack of belief where we're constantly searching yeah. and we're testing systems and yeah. to try and achieve that. Yeah, and then we realise either it was better before or yeah, we're looking for something else and. I've been at the institution probably long enough to feel like I've been through three, four, five yeah. cycles. 
actually all end up achieving the same thing yeah. in a slightly different way. And I think that, like I said, so like I, I'm obviously heavily invested in UGL. So my, my, my doctorate's in that space, and I, I'm, 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 I'm enthusiastic about it. And I, 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 I chip on my shoulder about other bits and pieces that led me to it. As you say, like, it, it's very likely in three or four years, someone goes, oh, UDL, UDL doesn't work, here's a new thing. Now, do I then double down to one, oh, it has to be UDL, or do I go, okay, let's look at new thing, and keep my mind open to, to, to what, what's new. But as I said, like, I've, I've done a bit where I've installed a variety of different computer games on, on every computer in, the, in a lab, and got people doing all sorts of, of, of different things, because I'm going back to the start of my, my career, I read, I read one thing on gamification and thought, that sounds cool. And I, I dived into it. I, took, I, I was heavily invested in that space. Um, I went through a phase of getting people to play uh, poker for strategy and dealing with incomplete information and all this kind of stuff. Um, and I suppose now, like, like at some point, we, like, we've got the email today with virtual reality thing for te teachers or, or lectures to, to practice with and so on. At some point, I'm going to play with it. <laughs> at some point, I'm going to see if I can introduce it. Um, but there's going to be resistance, and then there's going to be a new thing in five years' time. And um, do I go to the end of like, no, I spent all this time perfecting the, the gamification. I spent, spent all this time building a, a virtual reality lesson. Or do I keep moving? And I, I think that, that's, I think if, yeah, you, 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 see, you, you yourself have to believe in, 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 its, in its efficacy. Um, and I think. I, I, I did a, like, for, a, a, it's, a, it's a module, or so it's, a, it's a class I do or on um, crisis management. And I look at um, an incident around 9 11 back in 2001. And I started teaching it in like 2008, 2009. Like, like my, own, my own personal case study didn't download it from anywhere, wrote it myself, applied it myself. I taught it for five or six years. I went in to get it to, to, to uh, use it this year, the start of the year. I started teaching, teaching from this is the scenario that happened on the day of my and so on and so forth. Um, and it dawned on me, I was like, as I was just asking them, who here was born after 2001? Every hand went up and I thought, oh, dude, this, this case was a lot. That was like, like, I slaved over this for months. And uh, like, everyone in the room just didn't care. Was, was, they're, they're like, I was like, I think I have to practice. This. this has to be a problem anyway. Um, and it, 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 it's not resonating anymore. Um, so, like, where I massively believed in its efficacy 10 years ago, I don't think it's there anymore. I think I've lost it. <laughs> so, um, there, I, I think it's a, does that, does that mean it's a, there's a transient nature to it? it there's a, a, a process to it. Um, yeah, I think, I, think um, I don't know if I've answered any question. Yeah, I, no, I, I think I've just talked to you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think the, there are two points that I thought were interesting. You know, your question about what if students can fail to choose as well. I mean, we, we live in a system where you know, our performance is reflected nationally through the National Student Survey, which is just an yeah. and internal survey. So we don't get it on that. We're not in a sort of black mirror space yet. Where yeah. We're getting you know, sort of star ratings, but I believe that system exists in a lot of American universities. Yeah, we do that. We were at the RCA actually. We were allowed to sack our future, and we did. Oh, oh yeah, well, yeah. Seven months. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, I'm going to find your future and get a bit more. You don't find. Just like your future loses their job. They just don't put on for one. They're really bad. That's what it's doing. They incented that to make it rubbish. That's it's not there. Uh, I, 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 I'm thinking about my first year here. Um, at the end of the year, I was like, go and gather um, all the, the student feedback. Um, but, so I designed the survey. I was to give my students as to how good I was. Now, I knew that I'm good at timekeeping. I turned up the time all the time. I was very disorganized. So I'm going to ask them about my timekeeping. I'm not going to ask them about my organizational skills. So like, of course, I get five stars every. Then I had to collate my own data, and then I feed that into the and being like, unsurprising, I agree with <laughs> like it's, it's, yeah, and, and I think that, that's driven by unions and all sorts of that, like, like, that, that uh, you yeah, can't I mean, have. Yeah, you know, to say that, I mean, we, we are operating also through different really, yeah. in the UK. Yeah. Um, so I think, I mean, I think it's interesting to ask yourself the question whether uh, that was or not you sort of failed, but I think more importantly in a way, um, I'm interested in this idea of reflection and individuals reflecting. And there's a, uh, there's a problematic built into it, which is about um, 
this notion of being sort of co-opted, having your sort of subjectivity co-opted into a corporation, which is essentially the space that we operate in, yeah. university. Um, I'm, you know, that is a problem, <laughs> you know. Uh, but then at the same time, I, I would argue that you can set up professional structures to enable reflection about your professional behaviour as a tutor. Yeah. So, you know, we come from a system where we're kind of obliged to have teaching publications and look system in the university that supports the staff to get the teaching yeah. publication. But at the same time, managerially, and I, you know, my job is sort of in between academia and management, there are ways that you can establish um, systems, I would say, with groups of staff of about 50 staff or yeah. something, um, where reflection is you know, facilitated. And it's, it's pointing not towards the individual necessarily, but towards the efficacy of the system or the efficacy yeah. of the approach. Yeah. And it's tethered, it's tethered to the, the you know the stats or the data that actually benchmark success. So yeah. around the cheat you know, levels of achievement. So it's good, it's great, it's not pass fail. <laughs> well it's it's not pass fail, but it's not a great it's not grading the individual, yeah. you're saying so is the it's thing that we're doing succeeding in, in terms of its objective and its objective is to enable students to achieve against them the outcomes that yeah. we've got some data there that we can use to yeah. measure whether or not the thing that we're doing is effective. And and what what happens if if the the review process determines that a particular not necessarily an individual but a faculty might be deficient in some way. Like so I've just been had that meeting about we do not seen the data yet but on around levels of achievement. So, yeah. <laughs> He's not fired. Yeah. Yeah. But um, what happens is that we had an internal system, and the, the, it was called making a difference, mad, yeah. mad system. Um, it was it was difficult for a yeah. number of years, but what there was an intervention, basically, you know, the institution staged an intervention into courses, yeah, um, in in a soft sort of supportive way, apparently. But that was in, what was interesting there was how it was. Um, uh, how that was met by different faculties and different departments. Yeah. So some, I think we were particularly receptive as a program. I'm obviously I'm going to say that, but I think we were, and yeah. that worked well for us. But a lot of programs weren't, and a lot yeah. of courses weren't. It's a lot of you know, people felt like the eye of sound was on you know, a lot of shits basically. Yeah. And got very argumentative and belligerent. So, but I, still, but I think if you do it internally, you know, we talk about ownership. Yeah. You can build the right sort of atmosphere and entitle entitled your team to know that you're having that process. Yeah. And but there is a you have to, in my experience in a big institution, what, what you're then doing is ensuring that you use language to describe how you are adapting or adjusting your behaviors that yeah. resonates with the institution. Well, you know, the linguistic difference that you're talking about, yeah. semantics, they're really important. Like, yeah. They're super important. <laughs> Yeah. If you start talking about one thing using a different word, then it doesn't resonate with the people who you need it to resonate with. So yeah. and that's, I mean, this is really more about the so, I mean, dynamics I, in the institution for me. I, mean, I, I, I find, I find here and in, in I, I, I've, I've, in the last ten years, I've been talking about different institutions, um, and maybe it's a, it's an Irish thing, but. In the institutions I've been in, it, it, a lot of that kind of self reflection, particularly self reporting stuff, it's always very self congratulatory. Um, and I think with where, like to, to lean into, into what you're saying and, and in terms of this slide, anyway, if you have, if you if you are the head of the department or, or at least a part of the process at a senior level, and you believe that, like, Engaging the process is very, very important, and engaging in changing and engaging in um, a legitimate, serious self-reflection, like that, that, that's hugely valuable. I think there is a, a, um, a temptation very often, and I see it in more so in the public institutions here rather than the private ones where profit drives also, like if you have a teacher who isn't good, that'd be, that'd be gone. Uh, very quickly. Um, whereas here, it, it, it's 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 very much a it, it, it's a either everyone's doing great, or if they're not doing great, it's like oh well, you have the opportunity to do great, um, as opposed to saying you're not very good. Um, and it's a, a, a consequence of that is that that a, a change. I know I mentioned the change happens slowly, but if no one is pointing out the changes, no one point, pointing out the flaws. Um, it becomes very, very, very difficult. Do you, 
could point on the deaf applicant in the room and say, oh, your job's disagree with everything today. And so everyone knows at the start of the meeting, okay, well, so you're going to be the one saying no to everything. You're going to be the one who does uh, information. Has anyone heard of um, the, the bottom's thinking hats? Yeah, yeah so that, that, that kind of mindset, saying, so okay, you're the, you're the basic. Um, and at least then in, the, in a meeting or a reflective process, we can have someone going, maybe we're not as good at this. Um, at least, at, at least, then it has to be talked about. Right? And um, the, the that, that kind of um, um, yeah. So the links to to, to the ownership. Um, yeah, I, I think is that a question? <laughs> yeah, just sort of like about the ownership. It, I only have experience of this institution, so mm. I'm either going to throw us under the bus, <laughs> or it'll turn out that it's all the same no matter where you are. But it feels like. The ownership and the belief in things is happening, and like the reflection on your own teaching practices is happening at like the bottom rung, where it's like the literal people who deal with the students every day, and then you're sort of floundering trying to do all these things that you believe in and want to do, but you're working against this system, and then when problems within the system have been brought up with this institution and then reflections and focus groups have been organized to try and address these problems but you do the focus group and they're like oh we've ticked the box we've listened to what what everybody says and now we don't have to worry about doing anything about it we can just keep on going the way we always do things and like there are small changes happening but it's kind of like it's this awful feeling of like you're just waiting for previous generations to to leave yeah. so that you can come in and fix it but by the time you're in that position you're, you're too jaded to do anything but and there's, you're like, oh, there's, yeah, there's also a, there's there's a, a, the generational <laughs> memory thing yeah, 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 I tell you, we're going to say the caliber. I tell you, we're saying you're waiting for that generation to stay out so that we can replicate all the same mistakes institutions yeah. again. Yeah, it's kind of like that's what I think happen. Fund fundamentally, I think you know when you said change is yes, it's yeah, and, and, and so, so like, like all, all you can do is be like, kind of like master of your own destiny. Yeah, and then, I have to keep my son street clean. Yeah, and that's it. Yeah, and and, and I think like. I, I, I always kind of like when I'm 20 years teaching here and I've been teaching the same modules for 20 years, will I have changed? I mean, or at what point do I get to the, do, do I get a point where I'm like, I saw this, I've tried, and then I become jaded and yeah. something yeah. and I become the problem, and then someone else comes up behind and goes, just this step tells you. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, when does that happen? And is it inevitable? Um, I think, yeah, I think the, 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 the only piece is kind of a, a, a shout out to basically say that, like, you, 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 as you said, keep your side of the street clean. You, you can only do, do yeah. your thing. Um, I, I think what you were saying there that, that, uh, about the tick box, the, the box ticking process, um, in that it, it's, it's no one's responsibility to, um, to change things drastically. And so, like, the, there's a, there's a guy called Charles Ledbetter who talks about um, uh, incremental innovation and how no one gets fired for going into a meeting and saying, can we change things one or two percent and moderately make that adaptation cycling? You do get fired for going and go, that thing that we've been doing for 20 years has been relatively successful. Can we blow that all up and do something completely different? I think it'd be better, but I have no way of doing it, of testing it to act on that. So the, the 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 bottom piece there, the uh, wicked problems. Anyone come across wicked problems before? So yeah, wicked problems. For those who are, I don't know, it's it's it's, um, it, it's it's basically the idea that you get think of something like the, the housing crisis. If you propose an idea, to the the, the, the idea is out there. You can't take it back. Yeah, and if you say, okay, well, one of the way we we can uh, address the housing crisis for IMT students is we'll build shipping container style accommodation on the screen here, I'll oh, put a thousand shipping containers there and pile them on. You can't test that and its ethics. You, know, you either do it and it's done and then you assess the results or you don't do it. Um, so if, if we, like, if I start doing 
new DL, or if I bring technology into the classroom, if I decide to do um, my marketing class via VR or augmented reality, or probably more augmented reality, um, I, I can't test it until it's done. And I've now used the students' time. I've taken one week or five weeks out of my, my teaching schedule. And I've used that, that so I, I'm, I can only test after the fact. And I can only do, one of the, the, the kind of the, the, the bullet points trying to make your problems is that you are morally obliged to do, to do right and to, to do what you think works. Um, that you can't really do, particularly for some that's uh, around, like, 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 that you think, I'm going to do something, but I know it alienate this half of the room. And I know it's going to work for these guys, um, but I'm going to do it anyway because it's going to really work for these guys, but it's going to be bad for these guys. A kind of extreme example of, like, if I said to you, like, you have to uh, end unemployment by June, right? The, the, the easiest way to do that is if you are unemployed on May 30th, I will shoot you. Like, and that's modern, you, you can't do it, but it would solve the problem in theory. But it, it's obviously an extreme case, but um, you can guarantee no one's reporting as being unemployed on May 30th, um, but it's morally reprehensible. <laughs> and it also hasn't even solved the problem, it's just made it look like. Yeah, and, and so, 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 so yeah, it, 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 yeah, so like, like I can that, uh, yeah, I can be the best I can work if I just get in there. Like, I got solid anyway, I'm taught him anyway, but you know, I look great in stats. So, like, I, 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 I'm like, there, like, there is the elephant in the room here as well, and there is like the student responsibility. Like, the, the, like we can do everything that, that we can try to do, but on some level, the student doesn't want to be taught. What? Like, and can the student fail me because I didn't make my class interesting enough that the student didn't want to be taught? And I remember going into a classroom. From the book that I passed with 220 students, I walked in, saw this room of people, and very, very vividly, I still remember a guy in the front row saw me walk in, he leaned back, crossed the arms as if to say, Entertain me. And he sat there like that, looking at me, scowling on his face for two hours. And the whole time, 200 people, this guy here was just annoying me for two hours. And I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I still remember 10 years later, it was kind of worrying. But um, yeah, it, it's, uh, it, there's a, a pressure to it. Um, but yeah, I, I think, I, do, we, do we guess there are now in doing the leading piece? Um, and then, so the ownership is the extension here. So, so just kind of clarifying the ownership. Um, this is kind of born out of looking at our, so for any anxiety team in particular, our strategic plan talks a lot about inclusion. It talks a lot about how uh, we will do right by all students and we're great, we're fantastic. But nowhere in the document does it assign responsibility. Does it, assign, uh, does it delegate authority or delegate responsibility for the community? Um, and then you talk to the staff, and um, I mean, the, the example that's, that someone gave me was uh, a student was going through the Caribbean building um, too fast in their beer check. And rather than saying to the student, a staff member contacted the uh, disability officer and said, could you tell the person in the wheelchair to slow down? And the disability officer was like, if that was a student running, you'd have said slow down. Uh, you'd have said something. The, 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 the implied belief was that the, disability, the, the disabled student what belonged to the disability service and not the institute as a whole. Um, and then the, it, it gave, gives rise to this discussion of, of being in the classroom but not of the classroom. Um, and we, like we want, particularly that there's, a, there's a whole new field, by the way, if anyone wants to get into the weeds of stuff around um, pandemic response and technology's role in pandemic response and how alienating, um, and particularly, it's, uh, like, I know about know animation, animation lectures here, but, but if, if you're doing something like costume design or model making or something, Doing that online is a whole different ballgame. Like it's one thing for me to, to teach marketing where I would stand and deliver a talk, but then to go online and do that, it's a, it's like, I can do that. Very difficult to do. Like, I can't even begin to think of how people would have done this uh, uh, in terms of um, uh, your online delivery. Um, but do, uh, you're, none of you are in that space with more hands on. You're, how do you handle? Yeah. I don't know if you were eating. Yeah, we're all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fashion, jewelry. So, yeah, so.
Strabics. Project based. Yeah, yeah. Who's who's doing the research on the non blue issues we look at? You said there's, there's a field of research around pandemic response technology. Oh, so so uh, in terms of specifically the article, but even I suppose like. Through the, the last year, it looked like that's where, if, if, even if I go on looking for UDL, the, the, if I do a search for only things for since 2020, a lot of it's in the pandemic response. Um, so I, I don't, I, I, I apologize, I don't have a specific name, but um, uh, there's a lot of people in that. I, I'd say the one person to look at would be Florian, F L O R I A N. She's a, a Scott, a place in Scotland in Aberdeen. She was done that. That would be in terms of school um, and primary education. Um, but she'd be she be pretty good at it. Um, and I, I think a lot of the a lot of the ideas are transferable from 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 primary secondary to to higher. But uh, I know her research is specifically in primary. Um, yes, this is where the yes would be the yes. Yeah, yeah. We've got some, we've seen, as part of the project, we've yeah. uh, 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 yes, and Poland have been responsible for the diagnostic survey. Yeah. Uh, they've, uh, we've, we've surveyed students in all the institutions and gathered that data. Yeah. And uh, again, what the students are telling us universally is yeah. very different to what our management. In terms of the, the post pandemic uh, response, not the 100% return of work. Yeah, yeah. The students are saying, oh no, for an inclusion, they, they really prefer a hybrid model, you know, where yeah. there is an opportunity to have some component of online and come in as well, you know. And then you have the likely side or the silent majority and vocal minority who say, well, I'm not paying. For a hybrid model, I'm going to be on campus, yeah. Uh, yeah. and you're going well. A lot of your peers want to mix. Yeah, so one of the other things we're, we're finding is in, in terms of our even courses is that it's very easy to, to market to news markets when you go, oh, we'll teach it all online. So we're getting for our, our master program, we're getting students from flying up from the US yeah. that we wouldn't have gotten before the pandemic. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's opened up that, but at the same time, then like. like so the, the, the masters in EDI that we had, the, the, the equality, diversity, and inclusion, that masters was always designed with on-campus in mind, and then it launched during pandemic, and now the product is just an online masters. Um, and that I'm very cynically, I think that's purely a commercial thing. I don't think anyone's ever asked if that's better or worse, or any, from a teaching and learning perspective. I think it's very much I mean, we'll get more people this way. Um, and I mean, again, I, I think there is a, there is, I think we have to be mindful that a lot of fun in terms of the, the, the next couple of slides, I'm conscious of time here, are around barriers to in like technology. Yeah. And tell, tell us, John, a lot of work on linguistic clarity in yeah. institutions. And it, 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 I can hear the institution thinking there. <laughs> I don't know, I'm just saying, that's as inclusive as we can yeah. get. Yeah. 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 That's not inclusive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. I, 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 I think, like, I mean, even thinking of it when I have stuff online, but it's about the, the first year student who is coming here from this kind of tolerant to higher education who will never turn his camera on versus the student who spent six grand to be here and asked us to go turn the camera on. Yeah. Uh, and it won't turn the microphone on. Have to have, have a contribution <laughs> to every, every every module. Um, yeah, I, th I think that the the there is like I know whenever I, I kind of get excited about a new piece of tech or or, or a new teaching idea that that, that the, the, one of the filters that I have to kind of run in my head is is that like one that the, there is the I mean it's, it's it's nice to think that all our education institutes their primary. Uh, purpose and reason for being and the mission statement all that is all around education and so on and so forth. But there is a commercial reality there as well. And um, they're not going to go and buy 50 headsets uh, for a classroom. They're not going to go and buy um, like uh, buy a license for 250 or say final cut or something for video for for every student in the institute. Um, there, there's there's realities to that. So so again, I think there is a a onus on on the individual um, to to be the, the 
I'd say like, like you're, you're, the, the second world point very likely anyone will be pushing this more than you, but you have to be the you have to be the champion here and, and find your own your own path. Um, I, I, remember, I remember getting in trouble a few years ago because I, I asked if I could get a particular computer game installed on computers and the, the game's like 30 or 40 quid for, for each uh, instance of it. And um, I got told absolutely not, couldn't do it. I thought, well, fair enough, I'll stand up legally and put on all the computers that way. And uh, then got absolutely blitzed out of it for using a, a, a government institute to, to download illegal copies of computer games. I guess it's fair. <laughs> I'm surprised you were even able to install your illegally downloaded copies. They're not allowed to have them. You're not allowed to do anything. But it's a lot of money, yeah. It's way we've lost now. I don't think you've not got to touch the blog anymore. Yeah, I, 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 I have a print this year because I don't have uh, the, 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 the special tire. No, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't have uh, the admin rights to install it. No, you have. Yeah, that's a good thing. Yeah. But yes, yeah, for his papers, yeah. But no, yeah, look, look um, I'm going to, I'm going to talk all the time and talk to you guys for any parting questions or any like last thoughts or fears or. Uh, I just thought you know you touched on with the students bar new. Yeah, <laughs> it's sort of that, like you know how much story put in. Like if there's someone who showed up on the first day and showed up on the last day, like how much. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you, you need to consider it's like I reckon if someone worked the whole year and it's really and then yeah, failed, yeah. that would be bad but like if there's someone who just shows up once and yeah. didn't want to be there or something yes yeah. you're you're, well, you're, you're, you're just the, the context again yeah. where it's like how much weight do you put on yeah so but like also you can think like, oh, well, someone showed up for the first couple of weeks and then disappeared off the face of the earth and then I would put the responsibility on me to be like, hey, students, well, are, you, are you okay? Yeah. And then, like, it, it's happened this year with, with one of my students who, like, she's, she's got a really long commute from Galway, so that's really crap. Uh, yeah. It's the opposite side of the country for, uh, <laughs> I don't know, but she also had, like, huge problems just handing up work. I knew she was doing the work see her in classes, but then she wouldn't hand it up for the assessment. Exactly. You would chase her to be like, just just give me something so I can grade you, and she still wouldn't hand it up. Mm -hmm. Then over the summer, she didn't complete her summer project, and then the first module for second year is kind of like, we get the students to assess their areas of weakness out of all the things you covered in the first year and do another project mm -hmm. that way. And I was like, okay. You're you're gonna just you're gonna hand something up to me. You're gonna you're gonna talk to me. Send me an email. Yeah. Yeah. And like I've chased her three different. I was like I've sent her emails. I've asked her friends. Literally just like, just text her and tell her to send me an email. Is, is, that, is that kind of like the where like per, um, perfect is the enemy of good and like she gets good assessment. She wants yeah. perfect. Yeah. I, I I don't even know if that's what it is. <laughs> you know, so get her to talk to but, me. Like, and so it's like, I was like I like I've done. All I can do. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm not, I suppose there is also the, the one thing that, that comes up as well is that like it's very unlikely that an 18, 19 year old student knows your subject as well as you do. So they turn and go, "Oh, you're a terrible lecturer." And you go, "But you don't, you don't know yeah. what I'm telling you." And yeah. um, um, so I, 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 I had an accounting lecture years ago, and like frequent, I remember talking to her once I got into this, into this career. And she was going to say that like every year her feedback was brutal. Like, you know, she got terrible scores. And it's because like her teaching style was I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna be an asshole and I'm gonna shout and roar. Now everyone was excellent at the counting at the end because like she 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 operated by fear. And she could come in and was just like, like was very intense and everyone was terrified of her. So everyone just did the work, everyone learned. And then everyone got worst lecture ever, hated her, didn't like it. So the feedback was always boom. But we all got great grades. So it's kind of, it's kind of like her attitude was, was like, I, I'm not here to be your friend. I'm here to make sure you're good at it. Um, and it's a bit, so there is, there's, again, to go back to the point where context definitely matters. So, but um, I do take the point that, like, like yeah, you, you, you can't be failed by, it would be very unfair to be failed by. Someone who hasn't been there for six months. Yeah. yeah. What about, sorry, it's, it's really interesting, isn't it? Because thinking about inclusivity, we've got an example at Bath where we have 
an excellent neurodiverse student who we're working really closely with with their academic access to yeah. 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 visuals. So kind of thinking about this idea for it to be that there's the opportunity and options and the student to own. One of the things the student is now asking about is Sorry, we're kind of working out strategies for how they can um, engage properly with, with their learning. So we agreed to kind of time frame for them to be attending at particular yeah. times of day so they won't be work best. They've now come back with, okay, but I can't, but I won't attend this session, this session, this session, this session. And what areas are negotiable in the learning outcomes? Yeah. And bearing in mind, you know, we've got different assessment formats. Yeah. We've got you know, all of these provisions. Yeah. How, uh, I mean, yeah, I'm interested in how colleagues would kind of deal with that because we're all for opportunity I, and options. I do, like, I, I, I think, I don't know why this is where my head goes with that. I think they're, they're like, as, as you alluded to earlier, like, like we, I, it's never been said, but I think there is a, a an unspoken expectation that we will pass as many people as we can. We get, particularly in first, second, third year, I say final year, but we will get people through. Um, and, um, and we will do our best and do everything we can. But I do think there has to be, on some level as well, like, and the government, this is still high education, that you can still, like, failure is, uh, it is an option. Um, and I think there is a, like if a student goes, well, I'm not going to attend half the courses because I don't work well before midday. And um, now, like if they have, uh, like I'm sure they have, if there's a medical reason or otherwise, they, 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 they say if you have a student who is attending um, a, a medical appointments in the mornings for a particular period of time or whatever, and they can't. Yeah. I do think it is reasonable for the institute to go, look, well, we will have to defer these modules, and if you can't attend half the time, yeah. that that the deferral is an option. And it's a very tricky thing to do because they might go, "Well, I, you should, in, with the principles of UDL, yeah, you should accommodate and adapt and chat and change everything for me." And again, if you have six students, you you have a little bit more capacity. If you have fifty, that that the the ability to do that becomes less and less. Um, yeah, we had to do this. We had uh, uh, computing courses over, and they operated very similar to business programs in the city, uh, where you start with a large group, and by Christmas you're expecting a lot of them to be gone. Mm. Um, and then institutionally you need half of them gone by the end of first year, because you don't have the space. And this was an exceptional institution model. I ran the pair of them instead of the or whatever, and he said, oh, no, that has to happen because it does. And computing works that way. That's a very slow push it there, right? Yeah. Like, and I thought it was unfair. Whereas, conversely, Aileen McKeough, I remember when Aileen, uh, you know, was head of the school, one year, in a very small group, we failed eight students. They had, uh, they had colluded, basically, to fail a major module in, in a particular year of their studies so that they could sit us at their leisure in the summer. And we cut them down to this and we failed it. And it was a big thing. Now, Alien, at head, yeah, Alien, the head of the school, she stood over it and she said, I accept completely what you've done. Um, and we will we'll do that and they will repeat that module. In fact, it was the whole year, which gave them a huge shock. Yeah, you know, that was fine. But the week after, she brought us in as a team and she said, That's your problem. You caused this problem. And you can't blame the students for this. You created the space um, that this was permitted and allowed. And you people have to make sure that this never happens again. Not in that way, not on that scale. Yeah. So you've got to talk to the students much more. To say that this is not going to happen, you know, and she made the error problem as a team, which was like, wow, yeah. you know, and it was like, it was kind of tough at the time. And yeah. you say, Joe, she is right, <laughs> you know, you know. Yeah. So I thought there were two different institutional approaches. One of them I thought was really unacceptable, and the other one I thought, like, there's learning in that. Yeah. So, like, we, we've uh, our, our real problem. 
um, with our level seven, so it's our, our introductory to, to, to business course, thankfully. Um, and we know that we lose an awful lot of students now to UC because they've expanded their arts intake. Yeah. But I think they're, they're bringing in upwards of a thousand students every year to their arts intake. But they know in second year that the rooms only hold 500 and have to push. Um, and so they, they are expecting a failure, but that, that it's taking students out of our, our kind of demographic, effectively. And then, so we like, like that, we had last year in that course, started with 12 or 13 students. By Christmas, we'd eight or nine. And by the end of the year, we'd maybe seven, eight students. And I remember having a conversation around last April, roughly. I'm like, uh, there is an argument I can make to fail every one of these. But then we go second year. And in second year, we get another intake uh, from, from uh, transfers and so on. So you usually ends up about 15, and Rasmus, yeah, you, you then you end up with a class. But like, there was a, a very real kind of problem. Like, like, these eight students, there isn't enough to get a second year. But then you have this problem of like, well, you have six staff members who are timetabled next year for three hours apiece. Um, so that's, that's, that's an institutional problem. Yeah. So, so, so do you end up having this, 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 this kind of like, see if you can find a 40% C minus for this student. You're kind of going, I haven't seen them since November. Yeah. Uh, and and then, then, then I think it's one of those things I remember thinking that when I got into this career, like, if, if as a student I had known, that when you're behind the scenes on a lot of this stuff, that there are other factors at play, not just my performance as an individual student, because it's brutal. It's, yeah. it's but it's really there. Yeah. Um, I don't have a massive solution that I'm not going to say, well, I've used it. No, I think, it, yeah, I think, honestly, Jim, I think, it, it, you know, these, these, these are the institutional realities. You yeah. know what I mean? And as you said, you know, there's, there's sort of, um, we do invest on a daily basis yeah. for the students. Um, but there, there's no solution to these things. And then as terrible as Matt, uh, you know, with experience as well, you know, then change is just dumped on you. Yeah. And you're just left with, you know, you've got 120 students in a class like Matt and uh, deal with it. Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, that's also an institutional reality. So like, I, I, like, what I face this year is because of like trending numbers, I've had two courses put together. So when I would have had Say two groups of 30, I now have one group of 50. And particularly, say, it's not entrepreneurship. And I meant to go back to the example of Murray. If I go around and talk about mid mid degrees, basically, truth, I get less and less timely truth. <laughs> That's why I'm missing the three or four weeks and go back and go, we're selling months. I go, use So, like, it's, it, yeah, but, but then like, now I have to change much the way I've taught that class for five years because the, the, the nature of that has changed. So, and, and that, that's going to be everyone trying to go, oh, it's far more social this way. It's better, like, or it's more yeah. yeah. On that note, I don't know if I've answered the answer question or just kind of a, a, a kind of uh, therapy session where we all we all sort of together. Yeah, uh, guys, thank you very much for the thank you for the